And welcome back, fellow adventurers, to Let's Play I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. Um, apologies for the long delay. Um, I want to get this video started, so let's just say it was a long story, and if you want to actually hear it, just look at the, com uh, the uh, description box below this video. But anyway, when we left off, my stomach's growling. We were about to land the Zeppelin. But there's a couple things I forgot to do before uh, hand in the previous video, so let's do them now. One is, we need to uh, uh, satiate Gorister's hunger, or else he'll just keep talking about his stomach growling. So let's go back to the kitchen. And do something that I forgot to do last time. Which is to My actually... Yes, we know Gorister. Which is to actually... Uh, uh, get that piece of bread because we last video we tried the milky fluid and that lowered our morality score I guess you would call it but what whereas we can't just grab the bread because the rats will be all over us and they'll attack us apparently we can do the old nursery rhyme thing and um, scare them away with our uh, carving knife so to speak That scared them away. All right. So now we can take the bread. And we can have this to actually cure Gorister's hunger. I'm no longer hungry, but I still feel empty. What's wrong with me? And let's see. I think I may have done this before, but just to be sure, let's look at the bottle here. It's empty, but the label says poison, fatal if swallowed. And um, I think before I tried to take the book, um, if you try to take the book, the cookbook, or look at the cookbook, it won't work. You actually have to use the cookbook. Here's a recipe for the milk of human kindness. Take the willingness to forgive and the will to be forceful. Mix the blood of innocence and the anger of the wrong. What kind of crap is this? You know, for some reason, <laughs> I think it's funny that you have to use the book, but in using it, he takes it and then looks at it. <laughs> A little bit convoluted there. Anyway, so that describes how to make this thing apparently called the milk of human kindness. So, the question remains, is that this milky fluid that we have in our possession? It's not really known. You might notice uh, occasional uh, glitches every now and then. I'm trying to uh, tweak the emulator to see if I can fix those. So hopefully they will be less common as uh, we go through the rest of this recording. And let's see, the next thing I want to do is get the rope back, actually, because we're going to need that later. So use knife with the rope. There we go. Now we can actually land this airship. Use the knife with airbags. We want to make ourselves uh, lose some altitude. We're going to need to get rid of some of the uh, gas in this in these bags. Gas is rushing out. They're called airbags, but obviously they're not airbags because if they were, we wouldn't be floating. We would probably just be on the ground, most likely filled with helium or something like that. And if we look at the altimeter. We're at a level altitude. A level altitude. So that didn't quite work. If we use the knife one more time. Something feels different. Oops. Now look at the altimeter again. We're dropping slowly. There we go. So if you cut any more airbags, then um, 
uh, you're, you'll be falling too fast and you'll actually crash. Whereas here, we'll actually fall at a gentle enough rate that we can land. We landed, but where? And uh, as you recall, we saw a honky tonk off in the distance, and now we actually appear to be there. So we can use the uh, hatch and go down. Some roadside honky tonk with my name on it. All right. Now, um, I want to check uh, my settings here before I go in, just to avoid any serious glitches. So I'll be back just after the cut here. Alright, let's have a look around this honky tonk here. It looks pretty abandoned. A big worn truck tire. Reminds me of the truck stops I used to visit. It's a weird satellite dish on top there. Mm, don't see anything else here except the front door, so let's go ahead and go in. Grubby, but somehow familiar. Thing behind the bar of interest. Oop, oh, oop, oh, oop, oh, right there. Whiskey. Whiskey. Harry used to guzzle this stuff like it was tap water. I believe Harry is his father in law. Let's go ahead and take the whiskey here. Looks about 60% uh, full. And the other thing we can uh, interact with is the jukebox. An old fashioned jukebox. Let's see. We can use it. We don't need any quarters, apparently. And there are four selections. First one is called Jezebel. That shrill voice can only belong to that bitch Edna, my mother-in-law. She's always blamed me for Glennis being put into an insane asylum. Why not? It was my fault, wasn't it? Yeah, we could look at number two. Takes two to tango. You don't ever take me dancing. That's what Glennis said the night we fought. Oh God, why'd I have to hit her? I'd rather kill myself than hurt my poor Glennis. And if we do this one, this one's kind of this one's kind of uh, sneaky. Um, it's called "This Way Lies Madness." But if you listen to it, which is basically just uh, Edna uh, railing against uh, Gorister some more, it actually causes you to drop your morality score. So we're going to avoid it and just have this last one called Face the Music. Which is completely weird and doesn't seem to have much point at all. <laughs> I don't know if that was supposed to be some kind of Easter egg or what. I've never figured out what that last uh, entry was for. Anyway, let's go out the back door here. Everything's coated with grime. Oh, not look at. I want to use. Please. Thank you. Well, Gorister, you've seen better days. So has the big machine, for that matter. Okay. We have a talking jackal for some reason. That's kind of random. Heed my words, Gorister. You'd never make it alone out there. And don't expect me to be a good doggy in tag. And sure enough, um, we cannot escape, I guess is the word, out through the desert. Although, being at this point that it seems that Am is kind of omnipotent, uh, at least within this domain, I don't think Gorister would have much chance escaping him, even if he could survive out in that desert. No trash cans? There's more interesting rubbish to sift through, Gorister. Does that give you some food for them? And we're going to see uh, throughout this episode that the Jackal likes to not quite speak in riddles so much, but loves to use evasive language. He never just really comes out and says what's on his mind. 
What are you thinking, boys? You can't tumble out of this place. Now we don't even have a shovel. <laughs> if you try to look at the jackal, he just growls at you. But since he can talk, I guess we can talk to him. What are you? I'm man's best friend. One of them, at least. Hmm. So he claims to be a friend of humanity. No. What are you, really? Let me answer with a riddle. Today I saw a chunk. Now what do you suppose that means? Your am. Playing with my mind again. No, but I do have an in with the big machine. He and I are like brothers. Hmm. So he claims he's not Am. Some other player in this drama, perhaps? He certainly doesn't seem to be a human being. Why can't you give me a straight answer? Like so many others down here, I'm cursed to speak in riddles. We all have our curses to bear. Eh, Gorista? Yeah? What's my curse? After 109 years in the belly of the beast, I'd think you'd have a gut instinct by now. Look, I'm getting tired of your smart mouth. Come, come, Gorista. Forgive and forget. Where do you come from? Here, there, everywhere. So you must know what lies across the mountains. Freedom for some. If they're cut out for it, it's a long journey across the desert. That desert doesn't look any worse than the other hell holes Am's cooked up for us. Heed my words, Gorister. You'd never make it alone out there. And don't expect me to be a good doggy in tag along. I've heard that line before. What do you want? I have a craving. A craving for something scrumptious. A human heart, perhaps. Yours. I've got nothing more to say to you. You can refuse him, um, but you can actually do that. Give Garcia's heart to Jackal. I'm not giving this away. If I'm gonna die, I'm taking everything with me. I'm not giving this away. If I'm gonna die, I'm taking everything with me. Oops. <laughs> I think I actually clicked that twice. Nope, nope. Doesn't work yet. He's, uh... Still seems very selfish, uh, apparently. Um, but at some part, we are going to give a heart to the Jackal. I'm, I'm not quite sure why he wants the heart. There may be a lot of symbolism going on um, that I'm missing at this That's point. That's it, his husband, Harry. Being that this, uh, that uh, Am can create whatever he wants, apparently, there could be some kind of weird symbolism or allegory going on because the literal stuff around here doesn't always make a lot of sense you know just as an example we have a talking jackal outside the door <laughs> Harry looks like he's on another one of his drinking binges so if we try to talk to him Harry how did you get here you know it's a big place, the desert. Got lost in it myself. Whose heart was impaled on the Zeppelin spike? Looks like there's a thunderstorm on the horizon. You notice that they're just kind of talking past each other here. What's this about a thunderstorm? You know, it's a big place, the desert. Got lost in it myself. Let me pour you a drink. So, if we start giving him the whiskey, we can start to uh, actually get some more out of him than just those two lines. Harry, how did you get here? The Zeppelin, Gorister. We came on the Zeppelin. Let me pour you a drink. What do you know about the Zeppelin? You'll have to talk to Edna. She knows all about the Zeppelin. That's why we did it, you know. What happened in the dining room? 
I shouldn't have let her force me into it. I'm not a murderer. Who did you kill? Didn't look at the wreckage in the dining room too closely, did you? Or haven't you had to take a leak yet? Interesting. We'll, we'll see what the what he's actually Let referring to in a drink. A and just where is my dear mother-in-law? I don't know. Good God, I, I can't stand the sight of her anymore. Can you imagine being kept alive for 109 years just to hear her carping? So that's interesting. So the claim here is that both uh, Gorister's father-in-law and mother-in-law were also kept alive for 109 years. So does that mean that Gorister and his companions are not the only humans left alive? What do you know about the desert? Looks like there's a thunderstorm on the horizon. Let me pour you a drink. <laughs> that might be all the actual straight talk we can get out from him. Whose heart was impaled on the Zeppelin spike? Why yours, of course. How'd you think we got here? His heart literally guided the Zeppelin to this place. What's this about a thunderstorm? You know, it's a big place, the desert. Got lost in it myself. I think that's all we can get from him. Talk to you later. So we know that... He, well, at least that uh, Harry claims that his wife talked him into murdering someone. And he says, well, you haven't looked at the basically the crime scene too closely or haven't you not had to take a leak yet as in use the bathroom and that's a place we haven't gone to yet so let's go there cracked linoleum broken fixtures disgusting let's have a look around although I'm not sure I want to it's broken broken mirror damn spouts twisted sink here there's something shiny inside the urinal. Aha! Uh -huh. So, this is, must have been what Harry was hinting at. We have a magnifying glass. A magnifying glass. Like the ones they use in detective stories. So according to Harry, we should probably use this to take a closer look at the crime scene. So that's what we're going to do pretty soon. Graffiti. The monster is not alone in the world. It has friends. And I think that is supposed to be the first hint um, about part of the nature of Am himself. Now let's see. At this point, I think I think I should be able to give my heart to the jackal. If not, we'll go ahead and go back to the zeppelin and look around. But let's see. It's too narrow for me to cross without falling. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that that must be a glitch, because um, that's that that was what was left over from uh, when his heart was on the zeppelin. All right, give Gorister's heart to the jackal. I'm not giving this away. If I'm gonna die, I'm taking everything with me. I'm not giving this away. If I'm gonna die, I'm taking everything with me. I guess I didn't click twice. I guess it's. I guess that's just another glitch. Um, now, to be fair, I don't know how much of these glitches were with the original game itself, or if any of them might have been caused by, by the emulator. Not quite sure. Let's see if I finish off the dialogue here and say he's not going to give him the heart. I am not going to give you my heart. No. Too bad. I was going to tell you how to get across the mountains in exchange. Oh, okay, yep, sorry. That is what I had to do. So, we give the heart. Ah, I think I'll save this delicacy for later. You want to get across the mountains? Go to the restroom and flush three times. I've got nothing more to say to you. And you can see the uh, <laughs> morality meter says that we're on a good track giving his heart away. Um, 
if nothing else, uh, he was initially being very selfish about it. So I guess, eh, I don't know. Just better to uh, be willing to give something dear uh, up as opposed to uh, hoarding it. Not sure. Okay, I think before we follow the um, Jackal's instructions, we are going to go back to the Zeppelin. Let me quickly save here. It's best to have, well, I've found it's always best to have at least three save games to cycle through. In case you make a mistake and you don't want to go back too far. And so that you don't accidentally overwrite a save game you need to go back to later. Alright, let's take a closer look at the crime scene here. So, magnifier with the vomit stain. I don't know what to do with these. No? Let's look at something else. Glass. Use magnifier with tablecloth. Whoever left these handprints must have gutted someone for there to be so much blood. Okay. What else can we look at? There's nothing special to see here. There's one key thing we need to see. Whoever left these hand... Yep, we saw that before. Maybe the debris. Here we go. Here's some hair that was pulled out during the fight. It's the same color as mine. And here's some that matches Harry's. Now I understand what happened here. Gorster has come to some conclusions. And if we go back and talk to Harry, we'll find out what those conclusions are. Edna poisoned the punch, and after you drank it, I wrestled you to the ground. When the poison took effect, I cut you open. So that's why Gorister has a huge uh, gaping hole in his chest. Why did you kill me? It's too complicated for me to explain. You'll have to ask Edna. Mm. Talk to you later. <laughs> you killed me, you bastard. Talk to you later. <laughs> so we are actually going to do that. Now we follow um, the Jackal's instructions. As strange as it is, we have to do this three times in a row. There's his wife, Glynis, and his mother-in-law, Edna, both hung up like meat. Kind of weird, uh, given that uh, there's no door here, so who knows how he was able to come through. Although it could be that the door is, since down here it says uh, walk to door, I guess it's just off screen. Some secret passage between here and the bathroom. Nothing to look at inside the meat locker except for the two uh, ladies here and the beef. I remember the first time I played this, I thought this was kind of ominous. The shadows here almost look like a demon with horns. Beef. Great A quality, too. Ham's never given us something this good to eat before. Something's wrong here. 
Linus. What has Am done to you, honey? You're gonna look at Edna? That's Edna, my mother-in-law. No, this is too good to be true. <laughs> he really does not like his mother-in-law. Okay, let's see. Can we talk to Glynis? She can't talk. All she can do is drool out of the side of her mouth. My God, what have I done? And now I remember he said that she'd been taken to an uh, asylum, so it may be that she's been drugged out of her mind at this point. Let's see if Edna can talk. It looks like I can't escape you, Edna. Even in the belly of Am. Why would you want to escape from me, Gorster? We're family, after all. You were always telling Linus how much you hated me. Now, Gorster, I was just concerned about my baby. Linus was so lonely with you always being out on the road. I know you were doing the best you could. Yeah. Edna seems a lot more reasonable than some of the previous quotes we've heard from her. Edna, you bitch. I know all about your plot to murder me. I had to make a deal with Am. I had to. I've always been harsh on you, I admit. But we're the last people on Earth. Let's help each other now. Why should I trust my own murderer? Alliances change, Gorst. Something's gone wrong. Am's two Conrads don't listen to me anymore. I need you. And you need me. It's that simple. Hmm. According to Edna, Am has two comrades. Could one of those be the Jackal? Hmm. Well, we'll have to find out here. So let's, uh... Edna seems really pragmatic. Maybe she'll help us if we'll help her. Yeah. Truck driving son of a bitch. This is for me and my baby. Let me go. I've got you now, Forrester. And if you think you'll ever escape me, you've got some new thinking to do. I guess she hasn't changed at all. Please, I'll do anything you ask. I don't know what's come over me, Gorster. Can you ever forgive me? I've been hanging here for so long, I'm not thinking straight. A sip of that milk will clear my head. Um... At this point, I don't think you're stable enough, so no. No, I don't trust you. Gorster, let me down or I'll scratch your eyes out, you worthless excuse for a man! Edna, you dropped a key. Hand me back that key and let me down. I'm your only hope of getting out of here. Sorry, Edna. I don't trust you as far as I can spit. Let me point my good intentions. I'll let you go. Now give me the key. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> and this is where um, you need to get... Uh, you need to have the rope back with you. Because on the one hand, if you give Edna the milk, the milk, um, as, uh, as we saw when Gorister drank it earlier, it does uh, refresh your strength. And the last thing we need is Edna to have the strength to maybe get herself off that hook and then do who knows what to us. So instead, we're going to tie her up. <laughs> and in fine adventure tradition, he just puts her in his pocket. <laughs> now it says Edna's body, but in truth, Edna's not dead. So that's even though that might imply it. Untie me, you son of a bitch! I'll rip your spleen out. Yep. See, she's still okay. Well, as okay as she ever was. Now we can take the key. And I believe this is the key to the locked uh, door in the Zeppelin. All right, so we will um, 
uh, get back to Glynis in just a moment. Next thing I actually want to do is go talk to the Jackal. Talk to. I found Edna and Glynis. How does that help me escape from here? Such information comes at a price. But I can see that you're in no bargaining position. I'll offer you a trade. Your heart for Edna's. I've got nothing more to say to you. And you can do that. You can, um... Uh... Give uh, the Jackal Edna's heart in, so that you can get yours back. But there is another way. First things first, though. I'm going to go to the Zeppelin control room now that I can get there. So use Edna's key with the door. So many dials and controls. This should be how we were able to get ourselves back off the ground. The ignition switch. And besides that, I think the only other thing besides the switch is the logbook. Edna wrote this logbook. Do we have to use it again? Yes. First entry. When Anne took us down here before the war, I didn't know anyone could hate Forrester more than me. But Anne did. He hated all of us. So again, more uh, evidence that apparently... Am had brought down other humans besides just the uh, five that we saw at the beginning of the game. If I can just deliver Forrester's soul on a planet, I can make amends for every minute of Glynis' life I took from her. I never meant to drive her crazy. I'll be damned. Edna's claimed responsibility for Glynis. Maybe it wasn't my fault after all. Aha! So again, uh, working against uh, Gorister's self-pity and self-loathing. Starting to think that maybe he wasn't the sole reason for his wife going crazy. I thought I could do what Am wants, but he's too precise. I poisoned the punch, but I couldn't bring myself to cut out Gorister's heart. And as seems to be the general case, Am's way of uh, conducting his torture, uh, at least a big part of it, is getting people to really um, succumb to their darkest nature. In this case, it seems that Am is, was driving Edna to do horrible things to Gorister in some twisted way to make amends for what she did to Glynis. Maybe I can have my husband do it. Then this Zeppelin can clear the mountains. But if we don't finish the job, Am will feed me alive to the machine just like an animal. Okay. Now well, let's head back. Okay, now... Oh, it's been a little while, so let me do a quick save here. Little, uh, little skips and stutters always seem to happen when I'm trying to save, but again, I just want to be on the safe side. I think I only need to do this once to get in here from now on. Yep. Okay. So, again, this milk can be used to strengthen people. So, let's give it to Glynis and see if it'll snap her out of her stupor. Oops. Bitter stuff. But I feel stronger. <laughs> and again, that's exactly why. I, uh, I do like to, uh, save. Okay. <laughs> this time, Gorster, let's give it and not 
drink it ourselves, shall we? Man, this really th takes me back to the old days where it was so easy to do something to make adventure games either uh, punish you or make a state unwinnable or something like that. Okay, give fluid to Glennis. This fluid should revive you, honey. Okay, now let's try to talk. Glennis, all these years and I thought I was the one who was responsible for your suffering. Let me help you now. Aw. She's gone. At least I finally made amends with her. I'm taking her body out of this freezer. So she actually is dead. Man, Gorster's just strong as anything. He's got two human bodies, one of them probably kicking and screaming, uh, and he's taking it with him. But again, you know, adventurer's license. Alright, um, let's see, just checking my notes here, yeah, let me go ahead. I think I can go ahead and do this now. We're going to use our trusty knife, which has come in very handy this particular episode. With the beef. No use. The rest of this carcass is frozen solid. Oops. No, 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 no. First I need to see what I'm cutting. Use magnifier with beef. The organs are still inside. Aha. Reminds me when Am ripped that hole open in Benny's chest. Sam sewed him back up again before he bled to death. That bastard's never gonna let us die. He's just gonna keep torturing us forever. And now... We can get the heart from here. One heart looks like another. And that is the key. Instead of giving the jackal Edna's heart, we can give it the beef heart. And that's considered to be the best solution. So give beef heart to Jackal. I'm not giving this away. I'm not giving. Oops. Oh, we probably have to do the whole talk to him thing again. Borster does not like me using the give command unless it's absolutely necessary. Okay. There's a shovel in here. Why didn't I see that before? Because you weren't ready to call a spade a spade yet, Gorst. Ha ha. <laughs> and also because the script writers demanded it. But anyway, now we can... Uh, do I take it out of here? Oh, there it is. Just gotta put the cursor in the right place. Take the shovel. Will you use that, Gorister? i like to know where all the bodies are buried. I'm giving out more hints as the jackal. So, uh, since uh, Glennis is dead and he said he didn't want to leave her in the freezer, we can bury her instead. Gorster is the fastest digger in the West. Use Glennis's body with the grave. Really bright green background now. Let's talk to the jackal. Here we go. Give the beef heart to the jackal. Uh, this is Edna's heart. A bitter organ, but worth its weight in gold to me. I give you your heart back. So how do I get out of here? A heart brought you here, but it will take another organ to get you out. If you can harness its power. I've made amends and buried the past. An excellent job, Gorister. But the thunderstorm is upon us. You'd better hurry if you want to recharge your old ticker's battery. And so those are the final two clues of what we have to do. 
We have to restore power using some other, quote, organ. And, um... I've got nothing more to say. Gorister uh, has been noting that his heart isn't working. So apparently to get it working again will involve the thunderstorm. Perhaps some kind of Frankenstein's monster scenario here. Okay. So, to get power... Go back to engineering, so to speak. And over here... We have this harness. So we use... Edna. She seems to have a good amount of energy still, a little vigor. We'll have her power this Zeppelin. I'll be damned. The engine's starting up again. Rather grim fate for Edna. But anyway. Let's uh, head back to... So I think I need to go this way and back using the door. Oh, actually, we need to reinflate the bags with gas or else we're not going to be able to float anywhere. should be right here. We have the switch. This is the inflation switch. The airbags are inflating. It also is the self-mending uh, hole switch, apparently. Or the power to reverse film switch. One of the two. Oops. Now we go to the control room. Do one last save here. Make sure I get it right. Filthy, like the rest of this cesspool. Oh, nope, gotta use the door. It's locked. Oh, we gotta use the key always. Ah, that's annoying. Ah, well. Okay, we have power back, so let's try the switch. We're taking off. So now, we just need to get Gorister's heart started again. And the way you do that, get ourselves out near the uh, the uh, spike. And you see the honky tonk and the jackal are there. Do it, Gorister. Blow the place apart. You may never have a chance to do it again. And we do have the huge gun, so let's try it. Use gun with honky tonk. And let's put the pass behind us for good. She'll go next. We did it! You saw just before the uh, episode there ended, Gorister's background turned white. That means that we got the very best outcome we could. And um, of all the ways that you can die or do things wrong, um, when you have successfully reached the end of the chapter without uh, 
well, almost getting yourself killed, because Am will never actually uh, let you die, but when you make some kind of near-fatal mistake, um, he'll always have kind of mocking words of dialogue to give you, whereas here he seemed a bit uncertain as to why Gorster had not behaved the way that Am thought. And that's going to be the same as we uh, successfully get through the rest of these chapters. All right. So, apologies for the delay between this recording and the previous one. But uh, we're back on track here. And when we come back, we will start Benny's story. So until next time, fellow adventurers, take care.